the, the feeling that you get when you make one world champion, you just can't forget that feeling. I'm starving. I'm going to keep going until I make me another champ. I'm not giving up. One, one, uh, one suggestion. Whenever you guys see the bank, try to go around the bank. You can move your head. Hey, bam, 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 bam. You know? Always go around the bank. Boxing is a brutal sport. I like it because I didn't mind getting hit. But if you want to be a fighter, if you ain't got this, Stay away, because you're going to get hurt. I started to learn how to box right after the Second World War. And during that period of the war, four years, I got beat up every day. I used to always say, wait till I grow up. I'm going to get every one of you guys, one at a time. When I got my revenge with all the kids that beat me up, I really wanted to be a fighter. <laughs> Hook, right hand. Okay. Oh, no. I'll choke him right okay. here. Okay, all right. I'll choke. Okay. All right. Jack. Two jack. Two jack. Keep that elbow. Tuck it in. Jack. Good, good. <laughs> I know they asked you questions, but I got one myself. Um, it's all about you wanting to make a whole new world champion. How do you know, like, if someone has potential? Hey, I see you spoke a couple of times, and you listen to Bobby, I can see. I tell you. I can tell. I think he did need to make the sacrifices he made in order to get to the top, to get to where he made his career. Matt Kurahara, the trainer of Julio Gonzalez in the three rounds. Once before this fight, it's early, but it's the fight of the year. It was hard for him to step away from family life at times, especially in, when I hit high school age. And sometimes it was a bit like, well, where's dad? I wasn't mad. I just kind of did sometimes question the time that he was away from home. But I understood, too, you know, this is dad's passion. This is dad's dream to work on his boxing career. And he tried his best, the best that he knew how. Ah, I just call him my trophy room. You know, all my awards, and my grandkids over there, my family over here, and all the champions over here that I work with. My number one man, yeah. I respect him and he respected me. Uh, he never took advantage of me. Because for a 15 year old kid to come to the gym and say, I want to go to the Olympics and I want to be a world champ. How many times you hear that?
Julio had a very special place in my dad's heart. Sorry. Yeah, okay. I get emotional um, thinking about that relationship because Julio was my age, just a year younger, and um, my dad just wanted to look out for him like his own, like his own son. Julio Gonzalez has been dropped again in round number 10. Teddy, we said he was doing a good job. Stopping. When he got killed, it, I was really sad. In fact, I did cry. He had a 50-acre farm. He was raising a cherry tomato and a cucumber. After he got finished, so he jumped on his motorcycle. He was riding on the highway. And from the other side, you know the dump truck? You know how big a dump truck? He was going on the highway like this. The guy was drunk and he'd hold your head on. And he would have been a world champ again because he wasn't out there alone, only about six months when he retired and was planning to come back. I like to make another world champion because I want to let the old timers know I'm still here. My three words, never give up. And I've, say, I've been saying never give up for over 50 years. To all the fighters came in the gym, I always told them, if you really want boxing, never give up. <laughs>